good morning and welcome to worship. This morning I'm so excited that we are celebrating Multicultural Sunday. Um, this has kind of become a routine over the past few years as we look at the diversity of the people that we see in our congregation each and every weekend. God, how God has blessed us with that and how we take this time to specifically celebrate uh, our uniqueness, our differences, and how God has created us so differently. But yet at the same time, how we are all able to come together and worship as one body of believers. And so this morning, you will see many times surrounded by the flags of all of the different countries, actually just only some of the countries that we find represented within our congregation and how we celebrate each and every one of them today. So I welcome you to worship with us at the Salvation Army. And I just pray that as we move throughout this time, that God will speak to you, God will um, use you, and that we will be open and ready to worship and to be able to enter into that together. Our call to worship today is taken from Psalm 47, which says, Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy, for the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing to him a psalm of praise. And this morning, that's what we're going to do. We're going to come together as all the nations of all people across this earth, wherever you may be watching from today, whatever country you may be in, and you're joining us today, that we come together as one nation and one people and we sing praises and we worship God together. So I invite you to sing with us today as we sing and we praise God. to pray in Tamil. Let us pray. Anbula Yesuvi Katare in the Kali Veli Dadaga Nantu Shotram Sivam Katare in Gulla Ella Makale Unanbala Asir Vada Sivataga Nantri Shotram Sivam Katave Kartave in Gulla Makale Mikapa the Randri Kolgram Sakave Katave Mukya Maga in the Noi Parvadagaga Tarkadagaga Karvale Un 
கிருபியும் ஆசிர்வாதம் எங்கள் மேல் ஊற்ற கத்தவே நான் வேண்டிக்கொள்கிறேன் கத்தவே மீண்டும் கத்தவே இந்த சல்வேஷன் சாமி ஈஸ்வரத்து போகாக நான் வேண்டிக்கொள்கிறேன் அங்கு உள்ள மக்களை நீ ஆசிர்வாதம் செய்ய கத்தவே எங்களை வழிபடுத்த வேண்டும் கத்தவே மீண்டும் திருப்பும் மீண்டும் கூடி வந்து உங்களை சோத்திரம் செய்ததுக்காக நம்ம எங்களை பாதுகாக்க வேண்டிக்கிறோம் இயேசுவே எங்கள் மேல் உன் கருபியும் எங்கள் மேல் உன் ஆசீர்வாதையும் ஊற்ற கர்த்தாவே நம்ம வேண்டுகிறோம் கர்த்தாவே எல்லாரையும் நீ ஆசீர்வாத வேண்டும் எல்லாரும் பாதங்களை கவி சமைத்துக்கிறோம் கர்த்தாவே எங்கள் மேல் உன் கருபையும் சிந்தனையும் ஆசீர்வாதம் என்றென்று இருக்க உன் நாமத்தில் வேண்டிக்கொள்கிறோம் ஏமே Prions le Seigneur. Seigneur Dieu, nous te disons merci pour cette opportunité d'être devant toi à ces moments. Et voici tout ton peuple se réunisse devant toi comme un seul homme pour te glorifier, pour te louer et pour te célébrer comme au jour de la Pentecôte, Seigneur. Ton Esprit Saint était descendu pour diversifier des dons et talent à tes fils. Beaucoup de tes fils ont parlé des nouvelles langues. Beaucoup de tes fils ont prophétisé. Et maintenant, nous les croyons aussi. Aujourd'hui, à travers les multiculturalismes, Seigneur fera des miracles à ton peuple. Seigneur, nous croyons aussi à travers nos différentes cultures et langues. C'est une bénédiction provenant de toi, Père Céleste. Bénis tout ton peuple partout dans le monde qui te glorifie à chaque coin dans leur langue, à chaque coin dans leur culture. Bénis ce peuple, Seigneur. Et Je laisse la continuité de ton service partout dans le monde, Seigneur. Que ton Esprit Saint puisse avoir le contrôle de toute continuité de ton service. Merci pour tout. Merci pour ta bénédiction. Merci pour ta protection. Nous les croyons. Et Seigneur va faire des grandes choses dans nos vies, dans nos cultures et dans nos langues, Seigneur. Merci pour cette opportunité. Merci pour cette bénédiction. Merci pour ce privilège d'être devant toi à ce moment. Au nom du Seigneur Jésus-Christ, j'ai ainsi prié. Amen. Pai Céleste, muito obrigado pela esta oportunidade que me deste neste momento. Muito obrigado pela vida. Muito obrigado pela força e saúde. Perdoa os nossos pecados. Na fala, no pensamento e ação. Que o sangue de Jesus Cristo que derramou na cruz nos purifique. Dedico a nossas famílias nas suas santas mãos. Nos guarde e nos ajude. Sabemos que o mundo está mexido pela esta doença de Covid-19. Mas nós sabemos que a nossa proteção está em ti, Senhor. Desefeita onde os teus filhos vão pisar e pegar. Confiamos em ti, Senhor. Deixo a nossa comunidade de East Toronto na tua santa mão e o ditoso nos dá a força. Em nome do Pai, do Filho e do Espírito Santo. Amém.
taken from Psalm 86. I'm reading from the NIV version of the Bible and I'll be reading from verse 8 through 10. Among gods there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. This is the word of the Lord. Amen.
growing up in small town Newfoundland, um, when I was growing up, everywhere I looked around me, whether I was outside playing on the street, I was in school, um, I was in my church, everywhere I looked, the majority of the time, people looked just the same as me. We had the same color skin, we spoke the same language. And I remember the very first week that I moved to Toronto. And for me, it was such a big thing coming to such a large city, used to such a small town community feel in Newfoundland. And I remember the very first week that I was here, that I went out to the mall. And while I was at the mall, uh, stopped to eat lunch in the food court. And as I sat down in that food court and I looked around me, I remember thinking, this is nothing like what I grew up with. Whereas I grew up with everybody who looked the same and we all came from the same place. I sat in this mall and I looked around me and I realized I am sitting in the midst of the middle of the world. There are so many different nationalities represented, so many different languages that I could hear being spoken around me. And here I was sitting in the middle of it all thinking, here I am in the middle of the world because the entire world is represented in the people that are around me. Well, I'm so excited and uh, encouraged that in our congregation, it's the exact same thing. We look around us and we see the world represented in our church building. And it shows me that as we come together and as we worship, that we come together as children of God that it doesn't matter where we were born, it doesn't matter what color our skin, it doesn't matter the language that we speak, and even sometimes with the language barriers that we face of um, not being able to understand each other all the time, we don't let that stand in the way. But yet when we come together as a body of believers, we come together to worship and to praise God. And Psalm 139 reminds us that God created each one of us individually. He didn't create us to be all cookie cutter and to look and to speak the same, but he created us to be unique and he created us individually. It says even before we were born, he was molding us and making us into the person that we are today. And it's, it's exciting to me when God's people come together and we see that represented within our churches, that we are able to come together and celebrate how we are different from one another, keeping in mind that this is who God created us to be. Well, our scripture passage this morning, one of those verses says, All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord they will bring glory to your name. And I think that when we read a passage like this, we can see that the church of God consists of many nations. It wasn't meant to be just one individual, or particular group worshiping together. But instead of allowing our differences to separate us and divide us and keep us apart, that we allow that to bring us together. And that we see that diversity and we celebrate it just as we are this morning. We celebrate that diversity amongst us. Well, in Revelation 21, we read the passage of a new heaven and a new earth. And we are told that the nations will gather together. And on earth, I feel that we need to be able to reflect this, that we all come together as one. All nations, peoples, and tribes coming together to worship the one Lord. Well, I want us for a few moments this morning to just look at some ways that we ourselves can be a church of many nations. Um, I think it's important for us, first of all, to be an accepting church. Accepting what may be different from us and embracing that with open arms. Romans 15 and verse 7 says, Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring, bring praise to God. You see, God accepts us no matter what. It doesn't matter where our background is from. It doesn't matter where we were born. It doesn't matter what kind of house we grew up in. It doesn't matter how much money we have in the bank. It doesn't matter what color our skin. It doesn't matter what language. 
we speak that God opens his arms to everybody, to the whosoever. And therefore, as our church is here on earth, we need to be able to do the same thing. And we need to be able to welcome and accept and embrace everybody. Not by how we may look on the outside, but remembering that God looks at the heart and God looks on the inside. And that so we become an accepting church and we welcome all who come through our doors. And not only through our doors as they're closed these days, um, but as we embrace each other outside of the church building, as we embrace you this morning, whoever may be watching online with us, we welcome you, we accept you, and we embrace you. Second of all, um, we are a worshiping church. In 2010, um, I had the opportunity to go to South Africa, and I remember attending a service in Soweto. I sat through that service and barely understood a word that was said. Most of it was not spoken in English at all. When they sang songs, they got up and I didn't know what they were singing. But yet, despite that, I just loved, absolutely loved their spirit of worship and how they worshiped and the freedom that they had in worship. And even though I couldn't understand a lot of that was being said, even though I didn't understand the words, um, that I was able to enter into worship with them despite that language barrier that we face because we worship together and that we have that freedom to worship together no matter who we may be. Even this morning as you listen to our special music and it's not spoken, it wasn't sung in English, it was sung in Portuguese. And I remember the very first time that I listened to them singing that song. And I sat there and yes, I know the song in English and I couldn't remember all of the words in English, but I sat there and even as they sang, I was able to enter into worship with them. They were worshiping as they sang and therefore they invited me into that worship experience with them. And even though I didn't know all the words, I could feel God moving and I could just feel his spirit pouring out as I listened to them sing. Well, did you know that the word hallelujah is the same in every language on earth? No matter where you go, if you hear someone say hallelujah, you know that it means to them, praise the Lord. If you go back to the furthest mission outpost in the most remote jungle area and you hear a believer say hallelujah, you can always answer with amen because you know that they've said in the one common language, praise the Lord. God is honored when his people join together in united worship with one another. Well, our, our churches, if we are going to be a church that welcomes and embraces diversity of who God has created us to be, then our churches also need to be a place of hope. Romans 15 verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. It calls God that God is the God of hope whose great desire is to fill us with joy and peace. He wants us to overflow with hope and what a beautiful picture that is. We are to be filled by finding that hope in him then we are filled with joy and peace and that hope then overflows out of our lives and spills to the people around us. Well, the church is meant to be a place of hope and we are to be a people of hope. We ought to be the happiest, most positive, most optimistic, most encouraging, most hope-filled people on earth because we know that we worship a God who is a God of hope. And lately, with the circumstance that we find ourselves in and the uncertainty and the questions that loom so often um, as we listen to the news every day and we watch the numbers wondering what's going to happen next. A lot of people are struggling to find hope in the midst of this. But yet God says to, God says to each and every one of us, I am a God of hope. Just come, worship me, put your trust in me, and I will give you hope. Scripture reminds us that God is that source of hope, and without him we will simply flounder in a world of despair. 
because God has a big heart and God embraces us all and therefore also rejoices when he sees us coming together and worshiping him from every nation and every tribe and every language. In the end, if you think about it, we're all just the same. We may look different, we may speak different, but we're all the same. We all experience moments of joy. We all experience moments of sadness. We all experience moments of rejoicing and we all experience those moments of struggle. Our skin color may be different. Our homes may not look the same. Our life circumstances may differ. We may not even be able to communicate with one another through a common spoken language. But if you move past all of that, inside and underneath, we're all created exactly the same. We are all individuals who need a little hope. We are all individuals who want to feel accepted. And we are all individuals who need God. So this morning, as we've been celebrating and rejoicing our differences, let us rejoice that God has made each one of us unique. Let us rejoice in knowing that in our uniqueness, God has created us to be special. And in his church, God longs for unity and oneness as we all come together and we worship him as one. Our congregation at East Toronto consists of approximately 16 different countries represented and 10 different languages that are spoken. Some may look at that and think it would be difficult for us to worship together. We tend to kind of want to draw towards the things that we know and we're familiar with, don't we? But instead, I believe it allows us the opportunity, a very unique opportunity, that we are able to embrace and celebrate the diversity of each other, that we are able to learn from one another and be able to experience maybe things that we would never experience before maybe bring a uniqueness and a new way of worshiping that maybe we were never exposed to before, but yet we embrace with open arms. Well, um, as we come together and we celebrate our uniqueness and our di diversity, there's nothing more that we could possibly do and that God would ask us to do, but to simply come together and to love and to show his love to one another, that we would come together in unity and love our brothers and sisters in Christ. That we embrace you, we love you this morning, we celebrate our diversity and our uniqueness and who God has created to be. And the sad part about the world that we live in today is that so often people look at our difference, our differences, and so often that's often used against us. So often um, it puts a label on us. But through Christ, we are simply a child of God. That's the only label we have. Um, and so this morning, I encourage you to simply remember that you are a child of God. And that as we see and we encounter other people around us, as we come to church and we see all of these different countries represented and we hear different languages, being spoken, that we simply embrace one another and we want love one another with the love of Christ.
I just pray that we will each look at ourselves and others around us as being unique, as being created and a child of God. And that may we not look at how we are different and see that as ways that divides us and can separate us. But God, may we look at the diversity and the uniqueness that you have created us in and how you've made us all different and how that's something that can bring us together, that all nations would come together and that we would praise you in unity and in oneness. God, may we um, go forth and may we share your love to our brothers and sisters around us. Um, no matter where they are from, their background, the color of their skin, the language that they speak. But God, may we share your love to everyone, to the whosoever, no matter who that may be. And God, today as we celebrate our diversity and we celebrate how you have made each one of us unique, how we all come together from different backgrounds and circumstances and bring with us different traditions and even different ways of worship, God, how we don't have to be confined and just say there's just one way to do it, but that we embrace worship in all aspects and all people and that we come together and we worship you corporately 